Whoa, what? I don't even know what that means. I have to look that up. But anyway, hi. Uh, today I'm gonna be answering your questions. I asked you on Instagram and also on YouTube, the community little section, to ask me some questions. I need to get a water. Mm. A lipstick, you know what I mean? Uh, so yeah, I'm going to answer your questions. I'm just gonna try not to make this too long because like who wants to listen to me just like talk about myself, you know what I mean? Uh, but whatever. First one, what is your biggest pet peeve? I guess my biggest pet peeve right now, considering my only thing that's going on in my life right now is YouTube, is anyone who doesn't like something on YouTube and has to say it. And it's so unnecessary. That's my biggest pet peeve right now. Ooh, what brands do you think have the most aesthetically pleasing packaging? Ooh, that's such a good question. Well, Pat McGrath eyeshadow palettes are stunningly beautiful. Like the actual packaging, like the artwork on the outside is so beautiful. And then the actual like packages are, are like palettes are like super heavy and just like luxe. Like they look like pieces of art, like artwork. Like for example, if I wasn't working with them and I didn't have all the palettes, I feel like I would buy one and just like not use it because it's just so stunningly beautiful. Like I would just have it on display, <laughs> you know? Um, so this person asks, I'm just gonna sum, up, sum this up because it's kind of a long paragraph, but they basically ask like, how did you learn makeup? Um, because most people in the industry just do like reviews and don't actually teach makeup theory. I did not go to school for makeup. I actually went to school for art and I got my BFA in figure painting. I guess that's kind of how I bring like color theory uh, or like an artistic sort of approach to makeup. That's kind of like how my background is a little bit different. I didn't go to school for makeup. Uh, I've never been a professional makeup artist. I don't do makeup on other people, which is why when you guys ask me very specific questions about specific like skin tones or skin types, then I'm kind of like, I don't know. I mean, I can give you like my best educated guess, but I don't have that much experience with like doing makeup on other people. So, you know? Uh, are you planning to make your own makeup collection one day? I don't know. I mean, not right now. Nothing's in the works, but like, who knows? Like a, like five years ago, I didn't, I mean, I didn't know what the fuck was going on in my life. You know what I mean? I still don't, but it's a little bit uh, more stable. Slightly, not really. It's kind of, whatever. <laughs> Describe one day where everything wasn't working for you and you got frustrated. Today, I was struggling so hard today with this eyeshadow look. I even filmed it. I don't know if I'm gonna put it up because the blend was just garbage. Like I, it was just so bad. I don't know why. Bitches. What's your nationality? I, well, I was born in America. I am half American and half um, Lithuanian, like ethnicity wise, uh, basically pretty fucking European. I get Romanian all the time. Russian all the time. <laughs> so I totally understand, but Lithuanian. Uh, yeah, this is very funny. Um, I have, there is a lot of crossover between my subscribers and my brother's subscribers. My brother is on YouTube. His name is Grainolf on YouTube. Those are my favorite comments when people are like, oh my God, that's your brother. Your brother is Grainolf. Yes, we're both on YouTube and I wanna beat him to a million subscribers, so help me end him. What are your general guilty pleasures when it comes to media? TVs, music, music, <laughs> movies, YouTube. Guilty pleasures. I mean, I've been watching Keeping Up With Kardashians since like the very beginning and it's so boring. Nothing happens. I don't know why I keep watching it. Like I basically just watch it to see like what they're wearing and what their home decor looks like at this point. It's so boring. Uh, but I guess that would probably be my like guilty pleasure. I other than that, I feel like I'm not really embarrassed by anything that I like listen to or watch. Yeah, I guess that's kind of it. What do you do in your free time when you're not making videos or doing anything makeup related? <laughs> um, I spend a lot of my, I'm actually struggling with this because I spend a lot of my time doing those things, like work related things. In my free time, I'm like watching Sopranos with my boyfriend <laughs> during quarantine, you know? Um, I work out, uh, I clean my house. This is a struggle for me and it is allocating my time so that I'm being more productive. And by that, I mean, I want to be doing like the old school things that brought me to makeup. I wanna be like drawing more, I wanna be painting more, I wanna be doing more like um, traditionally artistic things because I feel like that really fuels my like creativity and makeup. And lately, um, I just haven't really been feeling that creative. Can you do a face reveal? I will never do a face reveal. You will never see my face. It's like really rude of you to ask that actually. Ooh, perfume recommendations. 
the worst to talk about in a video because you can't smell it, but my favorite perfumes, I wear, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it exactly, Mugler Alien. It is so, mm. what I love about it is that it's not so in your face. It kind of sounds like it's gonna be alien, you know, like it's gonna be like really intense. It's not, it's like soft and clean, but a little spicy and sweet. I feel like I'm describing that pretty well. My second favorite is Chloe Nomad. That is like sexy, spicy, a little more rich. Uh, I love Le Labo Scent Health 33. That's like kind of chivey, uh, a little more herby, um, still kind of like, I, I prefer more musky perfumes. Oh my God. And then um, Replica by the Fireplace literally smells like you're by the fireplace, but like sweeter. <sighs> It's delicious. And I love to mix that one with the Fresh Cream by Philosophy. Delicious. I have so many good perfumes, you guys. <laughs> Were you an awkward kid or a popular kid in high school? Uh, definitely more awkward. I was not popular. I, I was like in a, I had a big group of friends and we were all kind of like in the middle. Like we hung out with everybody. But me personally, I was like pretty shy, quiet, kept to myself. Um, and I'm definitely always gravitated more towards the weirdos. Love a good weirdo. What's your favorite season of the year and why? Fall in New England, which is where I'm from. I'm from New Hampshire. I know that people are gonna ask that. I'm from New Hampshire originally. Plus my birthday is in October and like the leaves changing, it's so pretty and it's everything smells nice. And it's like perfect weather because like it's nice and cool. So you can wear like baller jackets and like boots and shit, but it's not cold. Cause like, I don't fuck with snow. I don't do that anymore. I did it for like 25 years. I'm done with that shit. How hard was moving from New Hampshire to LA? Um, it wasn't easy but it also wasn't like the hardest thing. We didn't really bring much with us. For those of you who don't know, I moved out here with my brother and I mean, we didn't have shit. We had the support of our parents basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, we had like basically no prospects when we moved out here and I still don't know how we made it work. It definitely like would have been a hell of a lot harder if we'd done it on our own. Uh, so having each other was, was good even though we fought so much when we first moved out here. It was, it was tough, but we made it work and you know, I don't know. If you want to do something, you just kind of do it. I don't know. Thinking, looking back, it was like we had no, like I remember telling people that I was moving to LA and they were like, do you have a job lined up? And I was like, nope. And they were like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, I don't know. Uh, and it all worked out. So I don't know. Your favorite influencers and brands. Well, that's like so broad. And also my favorite influencers, like I have so many. Right now I'm obsessed with the Welsh brothers, Robert and James, just absolutely obsessed. And let's see who else. And I'm kind of obsessed with like so many people. I think I'm gonna ha have to make like a video about my favorite creators, just sharing more like awesome creators who are like matter of fact and speak like normal people. Cause I know that you guys like that. What did you want to be when you were growing up? Ridiculous when I was six years old. Cause I used to look at my mom's like fashion magazines all the time. I wanted to be a runway model. That was my shit. I wanted to be, cause my, okay. My dad's really tall and his whole side of the family is tall. My mom is super short. She totally fucked the gene pool. I was growing really fast when I was little. So they told me that I was gonna be really tall. Guess what? Your girl bottomed out at, or topped out. Topped up, topped out, bottomed out. I'm 5'2". So that dream was crushed in about seventh or eighth grade. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to be a runway model. I wanted to be a fashion model. But now I'm just like too mini for that your zodiac sign. I am a Scorpio, but I recently discovered that apparently it matters that I'm on the cusp of Libra. Whatever. What pets do you have or what are all the pets that you have? I've got two cats. One is my boyfriend's cat, one was mine, and then obviously we moved in together. Uh, so we have two cats, Boo and Ziba. Ziba was my cat. Ever consider growing out your hair? No, never. It's gonna be short for the rest of my life. I don't look good with long hair, but seriously though, I have very, very flat, fine hair and it just doesn't suit my like face shape like the pixie is what it is whoa what would you do if you see someone wearing makeup incorrectly like not blended well or overdone blush or something i mean i would just keep walking <laughs> it's none of my business <laughs> how do you pronounce your last name so it's actually my middle name and it is anelle it's lithuanian so alexandra anelle <laughs> will you create a makeup line geared towards olive skin if i ever did Fuck yes, I would, because the green people need our undertones. <laughs> you guys, it is so hard. I was just thinking about that actually today when I was contouring, because I was like, even though I found contour colors that I like, they still don't have the right tone for me. I'm too green. Frustrating. 
What are a few of your favorite makeup, or, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know why I read that. What are a few of your favorite memes of all time? I don't know if I have a favorite meme. Right now, in this moment, cannot think of a single meme. So, I have gifts, my favorite gifts, because, um, shh, I use those all the time. <sighs> Do you actually like living in LA or is it just easier for work? I'm feeling conflicted about this recently. When I first moved here, the first two years, I hated it so much, but I was living out in the valley, which was like so far away from the city, very residential, I hated it. There was nothing happening, there was terrible. So I was there for two years, hated it. Moved to West Hollywood, loved it, loved West Hollywood. I was like right in the center of everything. Any work event was like five minutes away. It was amazing. Like I could walk to anything I wanted to. Not that I really did that much cause I'm a loner, but like I could if I wanted to, but I just loved the area. Like I loved being in like the center of things. Uh, and then I moved again recently about a year ago or so. And I don't really, I'm not wild about this area, but I moved cause of my boyfriend. I mean this, this whole like quarantine thing has really had me like me and my boyfriend kind of like, we can't even take advantage of living in a city right now. So we're just like very jealous of people who have like nature around them and have like yards. <laughs> so um, I don't really know. I mean, I liked living in LA for a really long time. It's a, uh, I don't know. I'm feeling very like conflicted about it. I am not a Twilight fan, sorry. I get asked this question all the time. How did you become the eyeshadow um, palette model for Pat McGrath? So I am not just the model. I do the makeup looks on myself. Pat found me on Instagram way, way back like when I first started posting. Uh, so like, Jesus, how long have I even lived here? I don't know, like six something years ago, six or seven years ago. When I first started doing makeup and putting it up on my Instagram, she saw that and it was like when she was developing her brand and would repost it as like inspo. Uh, and then they reached out to me maybe like a year, maybe less than a year, maybe like a year after I moved out to LA and uh, kind of just, went that way. Favorite restaurant in LA? That's really hard. We were, we were like on this thing before the quarantine where we were going to like the top rated restaurants in LA, but I don't remember the names of any of them. But there was one recently we went to Sil in Silver Lake, which was like delicious, but I don't remember the name. And we saw like a famous comedian when we were leaving. I wish I could remember any of the names. I don't remember any of the names. So this isn't helpful. I don't know why I'm answering this question. What's your favorite and least favorite thing about YouTube? Well, number one is being able to create my own situation and make money off of it. Fantastic, it's what I've always wanted. What I hate about it, or my least favorite thing, are all the crazies out there who just say the craziest shit. It's like wild to me, like the things that people like, that like real, I'm like, I'm convinced that they're like bots. Cause I'm like, a real person wouldn't sit down and like write that. It's like crazy to me. So that is definitely my least favorite. I'm not even gonna give the examples. It's just like crazy. What's your favorite color combo for eyeshadow? That's so interesting. I, don't, I couldn't possibly have like an one favorite, but I'm really, really partial to really warm tones clearly, but like yellows, oranges, pinks, reds. I think mostly because like I have a very warm undertone and my eyes are green. So those tones really make the green pop. What were your favorite and least favorite subjects in school? Art, 100% favorite. That's it. I was always the best. Not even gonna be humble about that shit. I was always the best. Um, <laughs> but like, I was really good. Uh, least favorite, I failed two math classes. Two, terrible at math. Sometimes like when I'm adding still, I have to use my fingers. Sometimes I'll like look at the clock, like I'll be like making food and I'm like, okay, like seven, eight, nine. <laughs> like, I literally have to count it out. It's ridiculous. I like all music mostly. Um, I like all music. I'm not, well, I don't, I hate country music. I'm so sorry, but I hate country music. Um, I really don't like folk, any of that kind of stuff. But for the most part, like other than that, I listen to pretty much everything. I don't like pizza. I'm not wild about pizza. It has to be like an artisan, like flatbread kind of pizza, like a fancy pizza. And in that case, my favorite toppings are like prosciutto, burrata, arugula, delicious. Great question. Do you prefer thrift shopping online or retail store shopping? Oh no, I'm sorry. So prefer thrift shopping or online retail store shopping. That's confusing to me. Lately, I've been getting into more like thrifty type things because I'm sick, like especially in LA, everyone looks the same. Like everyone out here looks the same. They wear the same things. Their homes are decorated the exact same way. And I'm like, I need something completely different. So I'm like so sick of like just all the same shit. 
So I'm getting more into like vintage stuff. Yeah, like thrifting. Not, not that anything that I own right now reflects that, but it's becoming like more my style, I think. <laughs> Is Granolf your cousin, stepbrother, half brother, or your actual sibling? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is my brother. He is three years younger than me. A bunch of people have asked if I'm an INTP. I don't know what that means. It's like introvert, something, something. I don't know. Sure. How do you work out, maintain your body? Um, I work out regularly and I do my best to eat not processed things, all whole foods. I'm very obsessed with like clean eating. It makes a big difference for your skin, especially drinking a lot of water, eating clean, like just real foods, you know, things that aren't processed. There's this store out here called Air One, which is like ridiculously expensive. It's so stupid. Like avocados are like $3, but I mostly go there for the snacks because they have like brands of snacks that are like, uh, it'll be like plantain chips with avocado oil and sea salt. That's it three ingredients, you know what I mean? Or like almond flour, like cookies that are like almond flour with like very basic, uh, low sugar, like organic sugar, like all the snacks are like very uh, clean. Whoa, some such a meta question. What do you look for in life? Happiness, fulfillment, uh, good relationships. <sighs> I want to be successful in every way in life, in my work, in like the way that I feel, f like physically, I want to feel like fit and happy. Yeah, I don't know. That's like a really difficult question to answer because it's so broad. Why did you decide to become a YouTuber? Great fucking question. I started out on Instagram, like just posting looks, never never intended this, never wanted to do it. <laughs> like it was like the last, I actually tried to film a video like a few times and I was just like, I don't want to see myself on camera. Like I do not want to see myself on camera. Uh, and I didn't upload them, but people kept on, kept asking me to do YouTube tutorials. And so finally I was like, fuck it, I'll do it. Uh, and when I first started, I was filming on my iPhone 5S in front of my living room window and that was it. I had like a sheet, like a black uh, sheet that I bought at Target as my background. You could hear all the traffic driving by, not that that doesn't happen here. Yeah, it was kind of like sporadic. It's honestly, I feel like it hasn't been like very uh, consistent until like maybe the last year or two. Why did you get into makeup? So a lot of you guys already know this, but if you don't, um, I was on Pinterest and I saw Linda Hallberg's posting like, it was like, of course it stops right in the middle of the fucking story. Um, Linda, Linda Hallbergs. I saw her, she would post these like, kind of like uh, triptych, t was it tutorials or just photos? I can't actually remember, but a lot of it was like special effects kind of makeup. It was like maybe around Halloween. And that's what got me into makeup. I was like, whoa, that's baller. Like I wanna make myself look like a skull. So like, I was really attracted to like the art of it where people were taking it and like making themselves look totally different. Um, so that's really what like got me in it. And that's kind of like how I started. I started experimenting with like more artistic kind of like special effects stuff. And then slowly started like teaching myself how to do like more glam makeup. And then my taste kind of changed to like more natural makeup. So I've kind of gone through like very different phases, I guess, with makeup. And while I still love doing like full glam like this, for the most part, I love like very clean skin. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going towards more like natural stuff. But anyway, that was kind of like what got me into it. Would you say cutting your hair short is for everyone? No. Uh, I think it definitely has to do with like your face shape, your hair texture. Like obviously if you want to cut your hair, do it. But like I've definitely known a lot of people who have maybe very like long faces and very, very thick hair and they cut their hair really short and it's so hard to style because their hair just kind of like, the shorter you cut it, the more like volume you have. So if you, if you have incredibly like voluminous hair and it's just like really hard to handle, sometimes cutting it short can be like the wrong move, even though it feels like, oh, well, there's less of it to handle. You know what I mean? But I'm not a hairstylist. I don't, I don't know. I mean, do what you want. Are your neighbors still doing burpees? No, they stopped doing burpees. Um, they got like a rowing machine, I think, which is like really annoying. It's really, really loud. And it took me forever. It sounded like people were doing yard, like uh, not yard work, but like, I don't know, like pumping the p pipes or something. I don't know. It sounded like some kind of a weird construction type thing. Pretty sure that they got some sort of a weird like rowing machine or something. Maybe uh, 
a peloton? I don't know what those sound like. How do you approach a pallet and not get overwhelmed? I mean, I don't feel, hmm, I don't really feel overwhelmed when I look at a palette. Like for example, today I used the Natasha Denona bronze palette. Like I guess there are kind of a lot of shadows. Uh, a good way to kind of like approach a palette without getting overwhelmed is to kind of like break it up into sections. So like you could start off with this little section right here and be like, oh, okay, so I'm gonna start off, this is the lighter shade. So I'm gonna start off with this in my crease, build it up a little bit with that and then go on like the lid with this. Or like this section, you can kind of do like the same thing. Or up here, you've got like a transition. I don't know, maybe the outer corner of the lid, middle of the lid, inner corner kind of, kind of thing. You know, like palettes typically are kind of like built that way so that there's sort of a color story in each like little section. That's an easy way to do it. I don't know, I don't really get like overwhelmed. Sometimes I'm just like very indecisive, if that's what you mean. Do you have any tattoos? No, and I, I don't want any. Would you ever get another dark circle procedure laser? How long have you had dark circles since you were a kid? <laughs> I don't know why that was so hard to read. I don't know, possibly, maybe not. I'm feeling very conflicted by it. I have had dark circles my entire life. They are hereditary. That's why it's so annoying when people are like, you should have more of this vitamin. You should be eating this. You should be like drinking more water. I'm like, yeah, no shit. They're hereditary. I've had them my entire life. I have pictures of me when I was like 10 years old and like they're super dark. Like I just, have heredita hereditary dark circles that are just a thing. Tell us about your boyfriend. No. No, my like private life is gonna stay private. <laughs> what is a food that you do not buy because if it's in your house, it will not last a day? Smart food, popcorn will destroy me. There are certain like, I don't eat that kind of stuff anymore. I don't eat like processed, like I don't buy candy. I don't buy chips like, like baked Lay's or like, smart food popcorn or um, even like real ice cream. I just don't, but like that smart food popcorn will be gone in like 30 seconds, a family size bag. It's like crack and I don't need that drug around me, okay? <laughs> what brand are you the most unreasonably drawn to? Pro quality's not great or products don't suit you, but you still want them, want to make them work. House Labs, literally every single time I'm like, I want to like this, but I never do. Your skin routine and diet. So I did do a skincare video recently. I know a lot of you guys have been asking, but I did do a skincare, skin, skin, oh my God, skincare routine video, like a few videos, like you'll be able to see it. Basically what I use is like all Tatcha, like Tatcha water cream during the day. I use the Tatcha SPF. And then my nighttime routine is uh, dewy skin cream, something night concentrate, luminous, serum and then i use the i use curology uh the treatment from that i got from curology so like that and then like all tatcha basically just as far as like how i eat like i said i eat very clean i try to uh i like scrambled eggs we cook a lot of like cauliflower oh my god i love cauliflower roasted cauliflower so good i've been doing that a lot i make a lot of green smoothies we make like pork chicken steak and by we i mean my boyfriend because i don't cook yeah, I don't know. I just try to eat like real food, like real food, like food that like the earth gives you, you know, <laughs> like not the grocery store, like center of the grocery store type shit. What color to choose for from my outfit for my eyeshadow? I don't know. I wear a lot of like black <laughs> so I can wear any eyeshadow color, but uh, I mean, you can do whatever you want, you know, you can do whatever you want. Have you ever had a bad experience with a brand deal? Of course, many of them. We won't be talking about those though. Uh, so I am a self-taught makeup artist. I told you that guys. I told, I, told, I, I told you guys that, right? I went to school for art, self-taught, just started playing around with makeup and now we're here. Do you, this is an interesting question. Do you ever find yourself silently critiquing someone's makeup in real life? No, I never think about it really. Only if it's like a colleague and we're at an event and it's someone that like I'm meeting in, in person for the first time. Cause you know, like I see, I'll see them on Instagram or on YouTube or whatever. And then when I meet them in person, I'm like breaking down like, oh, okay. So this is how you're doing this. This is how this looks. And this is what you do to make it look like that in photographs. You know, that's pretty much it. In like regular life. No, not really. Do you receive a lot of PR and what do you do with those products? Well, I do receive quite a bit of PR. It has, it had slowed down during the uh, quarantine. Either I use them or I put some aside for giveaways, or I, I would say the majority of it goes to my building manager 
who uh, volunteers at an animal shelter here and they do like monthly drives and she sell they sell them and then the money goes to the animal shelter. What do you do outside of YouTube or what did you used to do outside of YouTube? So before I even started YouTube, when I was like working on my Instagram, I was working as a full-time graphic designer for uh, a newspaper and I was building ads and stuff. And that was pretty much that. So I was doing that stuff and then um, started my Instagram, moved to LA, worked at a cosmetic manufacturer doing like some social media stuff, kind of like graphics stuff while I was building my Instagram, working on YouTube during that. And then I quit that job and started doing it full time. Not YouTube, but this, this thing. I wasn't doing YouTube full time, but I was doing like most of my work was on Instagram. <laughs> Does YouTube fund your makeup habit? I would say ma the makeup brands fund my makeup habit. For the most part, I don't buy a lot of makeup unless it's like the OGs, which I do want to film. I want to film like the makeup products that I'm constantly buying because there are some that like I'll receive and then I fall in love with it and I just have to keep repurchasing it. So is it good to apply both setting powder and spray? Yeah, well, a lot of the time people use a setting spray to kind of set the powder that they've put down so that they don't look powdery. It's not necessary to use both though. You can use just powder. You can use just a setting spray. If you're not using powder and you use a setting spray, it might make you like very oily. Like if you're not putting a powder down, you don't necessarily need a setting spray, but you don't have to use a setting spray if you put powder down. It's kind of like if you feel like you've gone in a little too much with the powder and you need to bring back some of that skin texture. You know, and do you color your own hair? Fuck no, uh, no. I go to, uh, it's called 111 Salon in Hollywood, Sarah and Edward. They're a couple, they own the salon and uh, Sarah does my color and Edward does my cut. And I actually have a video of when I first went platinum and they're the ones who did it. So if you saw that video or if you see that video, um, actually, I think I need to update their like social info because I think they changed their stuff. But yeah, I'll link them down below because they're baller. You guys should check them out. Oh, somebody asked recently what I ask for when I cut my hair. So I did it, so I did it a little bit differently today. It's like, it's an undercut. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it, but it's kind of cool. What I typically ask for is I like it to be short enough that I can wear it like pushed forward like this because I'm not, you guys know, I'm not like so wild about my hairline. So I like to kind of create my own like fake little like hairline, which makes my forehead look a little shorter. So I usually like this to be kind of like that. And as far as my sideburns go, I don't really give a fuck, but I like them to be clean. I like them to be like pretty tight, whether they're like soft and feminine or like more sharp like this, I don't care, but I like that to be tight. And then when it comes to like the back, this area, I'm like, buzz that shit, get that to my skin. I hate when there's like, I honestly, I hate when hair is down here. It's like the worst feeling in the entire world. And then like, as far as the back goes, I like this to be short enough that like it creates layers, but long enough so that it's not like flat. I don't know if that made any sense. And my hair is like very fine, very short. So it needs a lot of layering so that it actually like has some texture. So that's what I ask for. For the color, it's just bleached. And then, um, I don't know, Sarah uses like some different toners. Like pretty much every time I go, I feel like she kind of like tries out different toners, but she knows that I like it to be like very white. So. All right, I'm gonna end on that one, you guys. I don't know if that was entertaining at all. I don't know how long this video is gonna be. I feel like I was talking a lot and uh, it was probably pretty boring. I don't know. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. I'll do it if you like really want me to, but I don't know, the more I talk, my mouth just like dries out and <sighs> people complain about it. Yeah, I guess that's it. If you have any questions that like you asked that didn't get an answer, uh, you can leave them down below and I will try to get back to you. All right, that's it, I'm gonna go.